right, so thank you all for joining. I am very excited about this webinar, and I think there is um, a lot of really useful information that is going to be covered. So please let me introduce you to our speaker today, Dr. Patricia Delay. She is a dermatologist from, from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and she is the founder of the Brazilian FOP organization, which now has more than 100 Brazilian FOP families. And she is also a founding member of the International Clinical Council on FOP, which you may know as the ICC. And uh, since meeting her first FOP patient in the year 2000, she has grown to become one of the worldwide experts diagnosing and treating patients with this rare disease. So welcome, Dr. Delay. Thank you so much for being here today. And I know we have a lot to cover and hopefully some good questions to address from our attendees as well. So I will turn it over to you to get started. Thank you, Karen. Hello, everybody. Okay, so get ready. Uh, today's webinar was designed to make you feel at home. I mean, I want you all feeling comfortable. By saying this, I mean that it was planned to make you all feel comfortable and ready to make any questions you all feel that you have to make. There is no dumb question at all. It's supposed to be easy, use an easy language and show you some, of, some interesting pictures and also some films. Dermatology is a very interesting science. It can give us clues about internal diseases and is a detective art. We don't know too much about FOP and skin. We really have to make a study in, it's in our plans, but it's, uh, we will have to meet each other. So we are going to talk about things that we think have a link with FOP and tell you what to do. Um, so be prepared to watch a presentation that was made for you with interesting, funny, scary, and curious moments. Relax and enjoy it. So it's F dermatology and FOP, what you need to know. You already saw this during the family gathering, but this is a, a bigger version of what I said there. What is a dermatologist again? Because most of you know dermatologists by Botox and uh, cosmetic procedures that we also do. But as a science, it's a medical doctor who specializes in conditions involving the skin, hair, and nails. A dermatologist can identify and treat more than 3,000 conditions. Dermatologists care for people of all ages. Uh, it's important to tell you that it was at the dermatology clinic that I found my first FOP patient that was having all those lumps and bumps and nobody understood what it was. So you may all think, I have FOP, it's such a complicated disease. Why do I have to hear about dermatology problems? Well, if you have something itching or something that is not making you good looking, you're going to remember why. The skin is also connected to all the organs of your body and can give you clues to the diagnostic of many important diseases. The skin is the first barrier of your body. It protects you from infections, not on, only bacteria, but fungi and many other infections. So you need to pay attention to the skin. So let's take a close look to FOP and dermatology. I remember from the family gathering that I did this uh, division, skin problems. We have many skin problems and we divided like skin problems possibly related to FOP itself. Let's say we link it to the gene mutation that we, we still don't need we still don't know, sorry. It needs to be confirmed by the detailed study that we hope to start in the next years. Skin problems that are possibly related to a consequence of FOP like immobility, position of the body, poor blood circulation. Skin problems possibly related to drugs, and this is much more um, common that you may all think. 
skin uh, problems that are individual, let's say genetic, um, the ones that are occupational. So it's important to remember not everything is FOP. You are a human being like anyone else. So let's talk about things that are possibly related to FOP. Seborrheic dermatitis is one of them that is commonly seen in people with FOP, and it's a common skin condition affecting oil areas of the body, such as face, sides of the nose, eyebrows, ear, eyelids, and chest. It appears as scaly patches, red skin, and stubborn dandruff. It can be more common with chronic inflammation and inflammatory diets. So here I put some scary, I told you, some scary pictures because it's, uh, we learn dermatology by seeing the scary ones. So you can recognize when something not so scary appears. So here is behind the ear, you see that the scales are greasy, are a little bit uh, yellow. Here is on the T-zone of the face and it affects uh, any age. So you can see it in newborns, because, uh, because of the remainings of the hormones from the, the, the mother. You can see it in the middle of the chest, under your arm, and on the T uh, zone of your face. It doesn't mean that it, it doesn't need to be like this. Uh, to tell you the truth, like this, it's very rare to, to, to see. So if you see something that reminds you of those pictures, think of Sebohate dermatitis. Uh, again, seborrheic dermatitis of the scalp commonly also affects the scalp, causing uh, scaly patches and red skin and dandruff. Other names, seborrheic dandruff, cradle cap in infants, seborrheic eczema, seborrheic psoriasis. So now that you know that you may have it, how to prevent it? Avoid, please, spicy foods, sugary and inflammatory foods, and alcohol. Uh, of course, it's not just avoiding these foods that will make you not have seborrheic dermatitis, but uh, it will help. Avoid hot showers and saunas. And here is our friend uh, that loves showers, and he has a lot of hot showers and that's why he is angry. Hot showers are not good for the skin, are not good for your scalp. It can make you your seborrheic dermatitis worse and it can also damage your skin. And sauna, so of, of course, because it, it makes you produce more uh, sebum and it will make your derma dermatitis worse. Avoid stress. So here you have those those friends with not friendly face. So avoid the stress. We know that the stress uh, can, can make seborrheic dermatitis worse. What doesn't mean that if you go to, to live in Bahamas that you won't have seborrheic dermatitis, but it will help. So try not to be nervous. Don't abuse of moisturizers. Here's something very, very important. Most people that have seborrheic dermatitis, they think they have dry skin and start using moisturizers a lot. So this makes the, the seborrheic dermatitis worse. It creates millions that are those small, uh, small white balls on your skin. So don't do that. It, it will make it worse. Consult a dermatologist if you have any, any uh, doubt that this is really seborrheic dermatitis or you think it's just dry skin. So here, uh, how, do you, how can you prevent the seborrheic dermatitis? You can use some soaps with salicylic acid and also shampoos, we are going to talk about it on the next slide. And what we, we were planning here is to give you an idea of what can be found over the counter. No prescription here. So let's say that I am trying to, to feel better and instead of going to the doctor right away, I will try those things. 
And even if you have some red uh, scales on your face, you can use hydrocortisone that you can easily find in any uh, pharmacy, any Walgreens, you find it over the counter. So you can use it twice per day for maximum seven days. If it doesn't get better, go to consult a dermatologist. Please, uh, Karen, do you want to say something? Um, no, just, uh, just what I was going to mention is that all of these products were uh, very easy to find. I just Googled them or like Patricia said, you can find them at a drugstore. You can find them um, at a big store like Walmart, like we have here in the United States. You can even find some of these types of products um, at places like a dollar store or just a general store. And they may not be a brand name, but if you look for the salicylic acid, um, then you know that you're getting um, a correct product. Uh, for those that live in Latin America and in Brazil, uh, there is always something from La Roche Posay that is the French, also from, from Europe, because La Roche Posay is a French uh, brand. Uh, Vichy, Galderma, and Stifel, that uh, now is Glaxo. So uh, it's not hard to find. And if you have any question about, let's say, a specific product that you find in your country, you can always contact me and I will help you. Of course, avoid salicylic acid if you're pregnant or if you have a extremely dry skin or if you are taking blood thinning medication. Uh, it's important to say that although we show brands in this presentation and you're going to see me talking about La Roche Posay many times, we don't prefer any, any brand, any specific brand. You have to use what you find and we can check if it's in your mind. And here are the shampoos. If you're going to use a shampoo, you can use the ones that have ketoconazole, salicylic acid, peritone, zinc. And you can look for shampoos on Google too. Um, you see also Fishy here, Darko's, Nizoral shampoo. And if you're going to use it, Please don't use it every day. If you use it every day, remember that your body is intelligent. So it's going to try to produce even more sebum. So what you have to do is to use it twice per week or maybe even three times per week. And then on the other days, uh, shampoo for normal, normal scalp. Uh, Karen, do you want to say something? Um, I was I was just going to um, reiterate what you said that we're not um, saying that you have to use any of these brands and we still think it's really important to either talk to your doctor or dermatologist. Um, if you don't have a dermatologist, we really would love to encourage you after today to start seeing one. Um, and I just wanted to bring up um, something that Sharon Cantani, she really helped us with knowing what types of products to put in this webinar today and, and really helped us kind of know what the FOP community wants to learn about. And she did put something in the chat there that I think is important to say that um, a lot of these over the counter things are great, but she said herself sometimes still needs prescription steroids um, to keep her dermatitis under control. So that's definitely something to keep in mind is that these products may help, but they're not the only thing that will help. So thank you for that, Sharon. So again, sometimes you cannot treat it at home. You need to look for a dermatologist. And then a lot of you might be wondering, okay, these products are great to learn about, but with FOP and limited mobility, how can I apply these myself? Because that's one of the biggest challenges of FOP is the loss of mobility. So the next two slides, I just kind of wanted to share with you um, about maybe some strategies of how you can actually apply some of these things. Now, if you go online, the picture that you see here is a bunch of commercial tools that you can purchase. And I only show these because I like to look for these and search for these online to give me ideas, but you do not need to spend money on tools like this. You can a lot of times find something 
um, that you already have around the house or you can find at a very inexpensive store to adapt and make it work for you. But we have a few on the left, we have a few um, tools that can help wash hair. So there is a sponge that's on a stick that is bendable so that you can reach up not only to the top of your head, but also to the back of your head. Um, or that green one is a silicone scrubber. And I wanted to mention silicone because it is very hygienic and it's easy to clean because you do need to clean your tools from time to time. Um, they will get just as much buildup of dirt and oil and grime as your head can. So make sure that you're cleaning your tools. Um, that third one is a tool that you can use to clean down in between your toes and reach all the way down because that's a very important thing we're going to talk a little bit later about. Um, and then some of the tools on the right are ways to apply lotion. So there are tools that you can find online that have little applicator sponges that you can put the lotion on and then rub in. Um, the one that is gray there towards the right, it looks a lot like a paint roller, and I'm going to show you on the next slide that you can actually use a paint roller, but that last one, um, you put the lotion inside of that blue head. The head comes off of that tool. You put the lotion inside of it, put the head back on, and all those little balls roll all over your skin and apply the lotion. But like I said, you don't need to buy these tools. On the next slide, um, I want to show you that there are a lot of homemade items that you can use to simulate the things that are in the store. Some of you um, have access to purchase tools like that, but some of you in different parts of the country don't have access to things. So um, I'm here to help you and the rest of the FOP community shares with me ideas to help all of you um, learn how to maybe make some tools that you might need. So um, on the, that first one there is just a simple kitchen sponge that you might buy at the dollar store to clean your kitchen dishes, but you can tape that to some kind of a handle to make it longer and give you an angle so that you can reach different parts of your body. Um, that second one there is actually the paint roller and it's literally from the hardware stores where you want to roll paint on the walls um, you can actually put lotion on that and roll the paint on your skin. Um, and then this third one here, the blue and the orange, um, this is an example to show you that you can take a tool that is meant for something else. These are meant to dust, like to dust your blinds and to dust your lamps and to, they're on a telescoping rod so that you can dust up on the ceiling, but they're made from a really soft microfiber um, terry cloth towel that you could actually use to either scrub or apply lotion. Um, so think about using things that you wouldn't typically expect to use when you're needing to perform some kind of activity. Um, and the last one was just a simple sponge that you could buy to wash your car or wash in the tub and you could drill a hole and put a stick in it to make it longer so that you can reach different parts of your body. So. Um, Always think outside of the box when you are needing to apply some of the lotions and some of the body washes and shampoos that Patricia's talking about because there's still ways that you can do this on your own. Um, I wanted to show you a really creative example that someone sent to me. This is um, a man who lives in Argentina and he took his loofah that he liked to scrub with and he had an old tool that he had purchased that broke because we all know a lot of the tools that we try to buy online are not very sturdy and they end up breaking, but he saved his broken tool and he found a way to attach his loofah to it so that he could still reach and still scrub on his own. And in the next picture, he also showed us on the next slide, um, he had another broken tool and he needed to attach a brush to it. And he has a long handled brush Oh, can you um, move the slide forward, Patricia? There, he had a, a long brush that um, he could use to wash himself, but it didn't have the right angle and he couldn't bend um, the handle of the brush. So he attached it to an old tool that again broke that could have an adjustable angle. And it looks like he just literally used screws and screwed those together. So please get creative in figuring out ways that you can still apply these lotions and shampoos and things that you need to take care of your skin because it is very important. Okay, just a, a note about washing the head. I know that it's not easy to wash your head if you have FOP, but try to wash it, let's say one day, yes, 
and then the other day no, but do it regularly so it doesn't become greasy. And when you apply conditioner, always at the end of your hair, never on the scalp, okay? So uh, let's continue. Skin problem is po possibly related to FOP. We have seen a lot of people that have FOP with irregular, intense pigmented moles. We are not sure if this is linked to FOP, but we never saw anyone that had a melanoma. So we still, we definitely need a better study of these moles. And you need to watch your, your skin for, for your moles. This is very, very important. So here, I'm going to show you some uh, small videos that were made by La Roche Posay, and we are going to, to comment them. The bad news is the most serious form of skin cancer, melanoma, is extremely difficult to combat if it's found too late. The good news is it can easily be cured when detected early. So, the challenge is to get everyone checking their moles and beauty spots, and their families too. But who wants to do this? Or find something like this? And who's going to get excited about this? Nobody. That's why we decided to use Dalmatians instead of humans. Dalmatians are elegant and cuddly. They make skin checking feel like something cute and fun. Dalmatians help us understand the ABCDE method more intuitively than a doctor could. More viral than lolcats, these guys are recruiting skin checkers all over the world, and they're spreading the word. For the first time, La Roche-Posay is stepping off the pharmacy shelves to lead the discussion. Well, the new ad campaign is highlighting the importance of early detection. Take a look. For the first time, skin cancer is a topic that gets people involved instead of scaring them away. For the first time, individual screenings are becoming a collective experience. So, if you care about somebody, take a look at their beauty spots, download the ABCDE method, and become a skin checker. The bad... Okay. So uh, this was a campaign that was launched by La Roche-Posay. Again, I am not in love with La Roche-Posay, just trying to, to, to show you something that was really, really interesting because it catches the attention. Everybody lo loves a dog, especially a Dalmatian and cats. So it was a way to, to tell people that it's very, very important to check your skin. So try to do it at least once per week everyone can help you. Check all the visible areas plus area that are not visible, like body folds and covered areas under the arms, between the buttocks, uh, under the breasts, stomach folds, and other body parts forced into flexion by FOP, in between fingers and toes, nails, scalp, and behind the ears. Here is another one that is also interesting and that shows you that even animals can find a way to check the spots. Isn't it fun, uh, nice? I think it's a wonderful way not to forget where you have to look for the spots. So what are we talking about? Once you see a mold that is, so the ABCDE method for the early detection of melanoma, because we have a lot of skin cancers, but melanoma is the one that scares us the most because it can kill you. So if you find 
uh, a mold that is asymmetric. You have you you. It's not like let's say a perfect round. Um, it's not you know what asymmetry is. When the borders are uneven, so you check the borders. It, sometimes it, it looks like a star. It seems that it's still growing. The color. If you see a mold that has multiple colors or it's dark, very dark, it's scary. I usually say that the melanoma can, can be uh, um, a regular mold, but can be a very scary one. So when you look at it, you see that something is not really uh, well with that mold. The diameter that is greater than six millimeters. And you see the evolving, changing in size, shape and color. So always, always look for a dermatologist if you have a mold that is causing some kind of, you know, discomfort to you. Okay, now for the scary part. So here are the skin tumors that you may find. This is one of the skin tumors that is very, it, it, they are also related. So be very careful. I know that especially, uh, uh, on the North Hemisphere, when, when the sun comes out, because you have a lot of time with um, snow and so on, everybody goes to, to the beach and uh, it's a, a party, but be very careful. Always use sunscreens and anything to protect yourself. This kind of skin tumor is the basal cell uh, carcinoma. The basal cell carcinoma is, a, let's say, a good one because it doesn't kill you, but it grows very slowly and can make you lose part of your nose, can create a lot of problems. You don't wanna have it, you don't need to have it. Then you have the uh, spine cell carcinoma that is a little bit more angry, let's say, and it can uh, go to other parts of your body. It's important to tell you that uh, the basal cell carcinoma can sometimes look like this and not really like this with those pearl borders and so on. And here is melanoma. It's what I told you, isn't it scary? You know that you have to see a doctor. So uh, again, check your body. Karen? Yes. Yeah, so again, checking your body when you have a FOP can be really difficult because of the mobility loss. But um, it's also difficult for people without FOP. I can't see my own back and I can't see behind my own ears. And so you can stand in front of a full length mirror to inspect certain parts of your body, but you are probably going to have to ask a friend or a parent or a loved one or a caregiver to inspect your body because none of us can inspect all the parts of our body that the Dalmatian and the kitten were inspecting. Um, we can't do that on our own. But if you are wanting to see parts of your body where it's a little bit uncomfortable to maybe ask a caregiver or someone um, to look at for you um, in maybe some private areas, there are a few suggestions I have. Um, again, commercial tools that you purchase aren't necessary. These are just as a way to give you an idea of what you might need. So there's a mirror that has a handle that bends but you could always just tape a mirror that you get at the dollar store and you could tape it or attach it to a stick at any kind of angle that you may need to see a certain part of your body. Um, the bottom there, there is a mirror that has some LED lights on it to kind of make it brighter and it's on a telescoping handle that uh, the head of the mirror can change angles. But something that I think a lot of you may already have, um, or they are easy to find, is a selfie stick for your cell phone. And um, a lot of these selfie sticks come on really long telescoping handles that can allow you to see certain parts of your body. But even better, if that selfie stick has a button on the handle or a remote control, you can take pictures of part of your body that you might not be able to see um, and that might even still be very difficult to see trying to use a mirror because if you're looking at a body part down towards your feet, um, even if you have a long mirror to reach down there, you may not be able to move your neck 
in order to see in that mirror. So I recommend taking pictures. Um, and again, if there's private areas, you can take pictures yourself with a selfie stick, um, but definitely you are going to have to enlist a friend or family member or caregiver to see some of those body parts. And it's important that, uh, well, I will be always here. I, I encourage you all to write to me if you have something that is making you uncomfortable. I can help you if you saying if you have to see a dermatologist or not. And remember, we are not only talking about sun, we are talking about light. So the light that comes through the window when we are, you are working, the light that reflects on the white snow on your skin. So that's why you need to use the sunscreen. And when you tend that you think you are protected from the light, you are not. Look at a truck driver after a life exposed to the sun. The side that was on the window is old. The other one is not. So we are not talking only about uh, skin cancer, but we are talking about getting old, even before you have to get old. These are the identical twins. And here also we have someone that was that worked uh, on the farm, on a country area, and someone that lived at, at the city. So it shows that there is a great external influence on the aging process. We can't just rely on the good genes. Are you convinced? So don't forget your sunscreen every day. Not only the sunscreen, and we are talking uh, later, Karen is going to tell you something about the other things that you can wear to protect you from the sun. And here, just the last one to remember you, to remind you that when you attend, you're not protected at all. So um, after seeing that cute video, no, a suntan does not protect you um, from the sun. And so here's just a couple of examples of some sunscreens that are good brands. Again, the, um, the La Roche-Posay, that is a brand. We actually can get them in the United States. I did some searching and found that Amazon um, carries that as well. So if you um, um, are familiar with that product in Europe, and um, the Latin American countries, we also can find it on Amazon um, here in the United States. And then I wanted to just mention a few things about protective gear. Um, it's important that not only you wear the sunscreen every day, but um, if you can find clothing to protect your skin, whether it's the um, clothing that has SPF included in the fibers or just clothing to protect your skin, um, it's really important to do. Um, it's another layer of protection so that you don't have to deal with some of those scary things that we saw in the previous slides. Um, there's adaptive equipment that I can help you find. Like there's a picture here of a wheelchair umbrella that can give you shade if you're gonna be out and doing fun activities. Um, hats, sunglasses, polarized sunglasses are best to really protect your eyes. And then I even found a picture of, or a um, example of this shawl, the woman that is wearing the shawl that's actually a shawl that has SPF in it, protection in it. So if you don't wanna have special clothing, um, you could even have just like a wrap or a shawl that you could put over your lap um, if you're in a wheelchair and your legs are exposed to the sun um, or that you can wear around your shoulders. So very important and there's lots of different places where we can find equipment like this. So please feel free to reach out to me if you need any help finding these things. Uh, one thing that is important, 
if you use the sunscreen in the morning, you will be unprotected in the in, uh, in the afternoon. So it's important that you reapply it in the afternoon. And it's also interesting to know that it's not because it's written 60 or 70 that you're 60 times more protected. No, it's just shows you the it's a, it's a, a an intensive uh, it shows you how intense the sunscreen is uh, about the rays that it protects against but it's not 60 times more okay so there are other skin tumors that are rare and that may be uh connected to FOP, like the Merkel cell carcinoma that is rare, aggressive, and it's a malignant primary cutaneous neuroendocrine system, a tumor. So it, it's not only the ones that we're talking about that are the more common ones, but we also have seen rare tumors um, associated to FOP. Other skin problems possibly related to FOP is the hypersensitivity to insect bites. So here you see this was an insect bite and uh, it was this big. So never forget to apply bug repellents when you go outdoors, wear protective layers of clothing and hats. And if you suspect that you have this kind of hypersensitivity, discuss with your dermatologist the best treatment for it. You can try the hydrocortisone steroid in your insect bites. It's the only thing that you can do twice per day for seven days. It doesn't go away. Please go to your dermatologist. This is uh, a slide with some scary pictures, <laughs> now for the scary ones, from the kind of insect bite reaction. So insect bites can be horrible can be uh, all over the body so we have to be uh, prepared to treat them and avoid infections so when you have uh, always protect yourself from insect bites with cream spray and physical protections you can use the hydrocortisone as i said and also some anti anti antihistaminics uh, and itchy relief creams because the more you reach the more, uh, the higher the chances of infection. And to prevent this kind of complication, never forget to wash well your hands, because if you can reach these areas to each, you can get them infected. Boric water is something that we are going to talk about. It's, it's very uh, important to clean this kind of insect bite. So you make compresses, put a little boric water in a gauze and leave it there for five minutes. And you can use neosporin that is an over-the-counter antibiotic on the blisters or wounds that may be caused by insect bites. If it's not healing or if you see pause, look for a dermatologist. So here, uh, intertrigon can be a consequence of FOP. So on the folds, you, uh, the skin starts to be red, itchy, and it's an inflammatory condition of this folds that can be induced or uh, aggravated by heat, moisture, maceration, friction, friction, and lack of air circulation. So many of you have seen this before. And what we don't want is an infection on these areas. So it's common to see infections by candida that is a kind of fungus, bacteria, or any other uh, agent. Always important to dry yourself using a cool blow dryer setting and moisturizer with plenty of lotion. So it's important, always dry your, the folds of your body to avoid it and never get too hot. Karen, do you want to say something? Yeah, again, um, drying all the folds can be very difficult with FOP because the different uh, mobility challenges that you face 
are there are a lot more folds than the average person because an arm may be bent and you may have a very tight place in your elbow or in your armpit and it can be difficult to dry yourself. Um, these are just some examples I wanted to show you of um, different tools and stands that you can buy to hold a blow dryer in place in case you can't lift your arm to hold it up. And I've also found some very creative pictures of people who have built something um, so that they didn't have to purchase one of these items, but they built something to hold their blow dryer in place so that they can either turn their body to get just the right area, um, some air that they're needing to try to dry. Um, and I think on the next slide, Patricia, there's even a picture of a fan. Go ahead and also use a fan if you need to. Yeah, it's, and it's always important to keep yourself dry. So in areas that uh, you can't reach, you can use the mental powder, talcum powder, horn stack perch powder that is less expensive and use the tools to reach into folds. So never forget, forget about hot environments. Yeah, so here's a few examples of what Dr. Delia is talking about. So the menthol powders, um, that is like a gold bond um, type powder here in the United States as a brand name. Um, this particular one in the picture is without talc because I know there have been a lot of questions about if talcum powder is safe or not. And I, I think that was um, possibly with a particular brand of product. Um, but cornstarch is a very inexpensive alternative that you can actually find at a grocery store. Um, you use that in baking a lot, so that would be another type of powder. But how do you get these things into really tight folds that you have? So this is another place where I'm happy to talk with you and come up with some ideas, and I'm sure some of you might want to post some of the ideas that you have in the chat. But um, I know a lot of people use a back scratcher. And that's what this picture is here, the very first one after the cornstarch. You could wrap a washcloth around the end of a back scratcher, not the part that's curved that you scratch with, but around the handle. And you could put it in place with either some tape or rubber band. And then you could put the powder on that soft microfiber cloth and kind of shove it into the area that has a really tight fold to get some powder in there. Um, you could also use, this is a picture of some um, hemostat scissors or some um, scissoring hemostats that surgeons use when they need to clamp and hold something while they're performing a surgery, but you could use these to clamp and hold um, a cloth with powder on it or this product here that you see, the um, little, it looks like a piece of gauze, but that's another product that Sharon Cantani sent to us that is a tonic cloth um, that she uses that not only um, without powder can help clean and keep areas dry, but if you added powder, that would be another way to get that into your armpit. Or think outside of the box. We all might have a really soft paintbrush laying around the house, or you could easily find a very inexpensive one at any kind of um, dollar store or craft store or even grocery stores sometimes have a little craft section and if you have really soft bristles you could tape that to a long stick or to some kind of handle that you needed and then you could apply the cornstarch or some kind of menthol powder to this little paint bristle and get it into really tight folds. So there's lots of ways to still perform these things and if you need help again I'm, I'm happy to um, help you come up with some ideas. And for people, if there is someone from Brazil that is watching this, the cornstarch is maizena, or it's um, amido de milho that you can find in Brazil and in Latin America with another brand. But it's very easy and we use to cook. Mm -hmm. So, other skin problems that may be a consequence of FOP are the fungal skin infections. Uh, like onychomycosis, the fungal on your nails, it's very easy to find it because you, you don't have a good circulation and you can't always keep your feet dry. So again, don't forget to dry your feet. Another fungal uh, skin infection that you can see on your skin or where you have folders. So again, keep yourself dry. 
You can use antifungal creams, powders, or sprays. Use between all your fingers, not only where you see it scaling, toes and under your feet. Use it for full 30 days. Oh, but it, no, but it's gone already. I don't care. Use it for 30 days. It's important that you don't stop ahead of time because it may come back and then it will be resistant to the cream that you're using. For antifungal nail varnishes for three or four months, but also remember that oral medications may be needed and you may need to consult a dermatologist. These are uh, products that I found with Karen that you can find over the counter. The varnishes that I was talking about, you, you can find Loseril and all these creams, you also find it in, the, in Brazil and in Latin America. It's just a matter of looking for them. And if you need help, just send me a message and I will help you. We don't recommend any specific brand. Uh, Karen, do you want to say something here? Yeah, the um, the low cereal that you mentioned, Patricia, that is the, the varnish or the polish that you would put on a nail. There's a lot of other brands um, other than that in the United States. I just didn't add them here. Um, but the main thing is to look at the ingredients that are in these because you don't have to, again, buy the brand names. If you just are looking for a certain ingredient, you can buy off brands. And often you can find those at all sorts of stores, not just at a drugstore. Yeah, and it's important that you treat your nails with the fungus because it's always a, a way to let bacteria come into your body. You don't want to have a nail with fungus, but it's hard to find, to, to, to treat a nail with fungus. We can be more specific in another presentation. Uh, and it usually needs oral uh, drugs so that you can't, that can't be taken without seeing a doctor. Skin problems that are possibly related to a consequence of FOP. And here we have one that is very, very bad, that is are the pressure sores. Uh, pressure sores um, happen because of pressure. So this week I was seeing that I was following someone talking about uh, a child with a lot of bones on the back. And those bones, uh, I think, were pressed by a mattress and something red appeared. The initial stage of a pressure sore may be just redness and some small swelling, like if it was an insect bite. Okay, on that particular case, that one could be an insect bite, but it could also be um, a, an initial um, start of a pressure sore. So it starts just a little bit inflamed, then a screen, the skin, uh, breaks and starts a wound. This wound extends to the fat and it states it, it extends to the muscle or bone. And here is also a very bad complication because then remember everything that breaks your skin is a, a door to the entrance of bacteria and other bad guys that may make us ill. So pay attention to this picture. These are the pressure places on your body. If you're laying on your back, it's the heel, the tailbone, the elbow, the shoulder, the back of your head. But remember that you have FOP. You have extra bones that may need to be protected from the pressure. So just spend some time looking at yourself and looking, uh, trying to understand what are the pressure points. So if you're laying on your side and also on, on your wheelchair, so try to make this study because it's not just, I'm not talking only about the, this pressure places, but about other pressure uh, spots that you may have because of FOP. Yes, Karen? Well, I was just going to say that um, the slide where you showed the, the four different levels, I, I think what I really want to stress is that if you are at stage one, where it's just that little bit of redness, I think people don't realize that that is a pressure sore. Um, it's already started. So it's really important if you are sitting, 
um, for a long time at a desk or in your wheelchair, um, that you get up and move and check your skin because if you have redness, that is already a pressure sore, a pressure sore that is starting. Um, I think most people think pressure sores are when there is just a wound, an open wound, but it's not. You can have closed skin that is red and that is also considered a pressure sore. Yeah, so if you have a, a sore or a wound, use you can use the Loric water per 3%, you put on a, go, on a gauze and leave it for five minutes. Then you take it out and you put Neosprin or creams with pain relief and antibiotics that you can find over the counter. But uh, sometimes you don't find the, bar the boric water. So what to do? You go to a, <clears throat> a pharmacy that has this made for you. You ask for a prescription to your local doctor and you, it's a good idea to have it at home. So just ask for a prescription, have it made for you because the boric water is very useful. It, uh, is, it ends the bacteria infection from most of bacteria. It uh, relieves the itchiness and uh, it cleans the skin. So it's very good. When you, uh, another thing that is important is that when you have a pressure sore on stage one, use a lot of moisturizer. If you don't have moisturizer, you can use Vaseline, but use it because the more uh, moisturizer the skin, the better. And please stay comfort. Use pillows, cushions, mattress toppers, uh, air cushions and change positions frequently. Uh, products may not be enough, enough again, and you may need to see a dermatologist. Don't wait too much. Do you have anything else to add, Ben? Um, well, I just wanted to point out something that um, Nikki asked in the chat. She asked if you recommended covering areas with padding if they have redness on them. So like a stage one pressure sore, for example, maybe on the elbows, would you recommend covering those areas with padding or do you need to leave those yeah, open well, and just do the, remove the pressure? No, it's good. I think you have to change position, but it's also very important that you cover the area. If you can do it, I mean, to avoid pressure that, uh, you do for some accident, you can have it covered. Unless it becomes a wound, then you don't need to here. Yeah, so on the next slide, I think we have some um, cushioning and maybe this will further answer your question, Nikki. But um, if it's redness like on an elbow or some kind of bony part that you have that is because of um, positioning where you're always on your bottom or your elbows are always rested on an armrest. You may want to consider getting some foam and there are many, many different types of foam, but um, memory foam is usually the best foam to keep in first contact with your skin with a more supportive foam underneath. So for example, let's say you're sitting in your wheelchair and you know that you need to have some cushioning and some padding. You may want more of a gel cushion underneath for some support, but you may wanna put memory foam over the top of that. And you also may need to go one step even further and you may need to cut a hole out of the memory foam where you know you have a piece of bone that is always in contact with that foam. So your question about the elbow is that if there's an elbow always resting on something, you may not only want to put some foam over the top of what your elbow's resting on, but you may want to put a second layer of foam where you cut out a hole so that your arm is resting on the foam, but there's a hole right where that elbow is. So your elbow isn't always in direct contact. Um, with the foam and sometimes that can help alleviate pressure. Um, I usually recommend you don't have to buy fancy wheelchair cushions. You can even go to a store and buy um, the smallest mattress topper you can find and then you can cut up that mattress topper to be lots of different layers and cut out holes of it. 
Um, some of the examples you hear on the right side of the slide are more advanced cushions that you would want to go see a specialist for, and they're filled with air. So there's air that fills all of those little individual cells that you see, and then the one on the bottom, you can see where some of the cells don't have air, and that's because there's a lot of pressure in that area, and the cells that do have air sit you up, and then the area where it doesn't have air, that allows some of the bone to not be in contact with the cushion. So it's almost like those areas are floating and not in direct contact. And then this cushion on the right is an example. It's very expensive. I would be shocked if any of us could afford it. But there's even cushions that can circulate air and measure even if you shift in your wheelchair and now I have more weight on my left, the cushion alternates air over there so that you're not putting as much pressure in certain areas. So um, try with foam inexpensively first yourself, but definitely if you are seeing areas of redness for extended periods of time, you may wanna see a specialist, either a, a physical therapist or an occupational therapist or a physiotherapist um, that specializes in seating and pressure sores and relief of pressure sores. Um, the next slide I think has some examples of mattresses and beds. Um, again, start inexpensive, just get yourself a nice foam topper, cut out areas if you need to, if you always lay in the same position. Use pillows, pillows are your friend. Use as many pillows as you need to, to support different areas of your body. If your knees are bent and locked in a certain position, put pillows under them to support them so that you're comfortable. The big thing is to stay comfortable. Um, there are fancier beds that the frame can adjust, like the um, third one there, the, the black and gray one that can raise your head and raise your feet. Um, the bed on the far right can actually tilt from side to side. So if you are stuck in a position on your back and you don't have a caregiver that can roll you, this bed can tilt. But again, these are things that are very expensive and some insurances or health plans um, in different parts of the world will not pay for them. So start simple. Um, the second one there is an air topper. So it's a it's just like a memory topper, memory foam topper, but it's air. So that little box is a little computer that alternates the air through different parts of the mattress so that you can simulate moving and changing positions a little bit. But none of these things, no foam cushions, no mattress toppers, none of this will 100% prevent pressure sores. You do still need to change positions and you do still need to get up and move uh, multiple times throughout the day. And I think that uh, you must be always creative. So I know many, many of those uh, devices are expensive. You can always buy a pillow, like Karen said, pillows are friends. And you can cut in the middle and make a hole so you can put your elbow or you can rest a place that has a bone inside this hole so you don't take out the pressure of this place. So be creative. This is the key. Yeah, so lastly, um, I'm not going to talk about equipment anymore. I'm going to let Patricia finish us up here. But I did want to remind all of you that um, all of these tools and all of these products and all of these tips and suggestions we are trying to keep track of in our um, Ability Toolbox online guidebook. And it's a database that you can access online. And the, um, the red circle in the upper right corner of that screen is a Google Translate button. So if you don't speak English, you can translate this website into whatever language um, Google is able to translate it into. And you can find a lot of these different tools and products um, in the different sections that we have the guidebook categorized under. So bathing and showering, bed mobility and positioning is where you're going to find all the different types of mattress toppers and suggestions for changing position. Now, I, I'm always adding to this, and unfortunately, I don't get as much time to work on this as I would like, but all the tools and products that we're talking about today, I'm going to work on getting them entered into this guidebook. So always check back to this. Um, it's a really easy way to go and search for yourself some different ideas before maybe reaching out to your national organization or you're also welcome to reach out to me. So I'm going to be done and let Patricia finish us off here.
Okay, uh, we are almost ending. So now I'm going to talk about other skin problems that are possibly a consequence of FOP. And we see those, it's not hard to find those purple spots on the legs. So how can I make it better? Legs up. So usually these purple spots are a result of a bad circulation. So the blood goes to your feet, but it's hard to come back. And sometimes they go out of the vessel and create those spots. That's why when you have your legs up, you usually feel um, that the, the spots are less, uh, are, are not so strong as they were before. So how to help the blood to go back to your heart in an, on an easy way? First, your bed should be like this. I mean, your feet a little bit uh, taller than your head. But it's the whole bed, not, it, it's not just uh, some pillows under your, your feet. It may help just to use the pillows, but it is, if, you do, if you use something like this, it's gradual and you don't bend this area. If the area is already bent, the whole uh, bed in this position will help. There are some uh, tools that may help you to put the, the end of your bed a little bit higher. You can buy this also in Brazil. And if not, you can't find anything, you can always, always use bricks. Always visit a vascular doctor. It's important to avoid thrombosis and ulcers on your, on your legs. Use compression socks. It's, it's always advisable to, to find out which one is the best for you. Move if possible and never forget to use moisturizers and be careful with your baths. Uh, this is important because if you have the dry, dry skin and it's not very well uh, with, it, you don't have blood with enough, enough oxygen going to your legs, the skin will become dry and it will become, you have this poor circulation, it will start itching and it can become red and then it can create ulcers. You don't want that. So use a lot of moisturizers and let's try to avoid the situation. Uh, you may find blisters and this was a little bit, uh, it, it was something that we were always trying to understand why. And it's very common to see people with FOP developing blisters on the legs. And it's, this is associated with lymphedema. So bones compress the lymphatic vessels and then the lymph comes out of the vessels. That's how it, it, it happens. So it's, import, it's always important to check for this kind of blisters. And I think, and here you have um, a picture of how it forms. So sometimes you may have uh, the limbs that are swollen and you may see those blisters. And sometimes not, not only on the limbs, anywhere on your body, because you, you may have this kind of compression. It can be big and the blisters are usually tense like this. Sometimes you don't see blisters, you just see the liquid. And uh, I, unfortunately, I knew an FOP patient that had to use towels on the floor to absorb all the water that was falling from, from her leg. So this is not something that appears always, it's not common, but it may happen. So be uh, aware that it can happen anywhere on your body. So what do I do? This is scary, isn't it? No need to panic. Just try always to avoid infections. Wash your hands and the hands of the person that takes care of you with an antibacterial soap like Soapex or any other. If blisters break, use the boric water compresses and neosterine twice a day and consult a vascular specialist and a dermatologist. This is something that you cannot handle by yourself at home because it can have bad consequences. I can help you with one blister. With, with a lot of them, we will need help 
from uh, doctors that you must consult. It's important that if any infection is associated with lympho hair, lympho hair is when you see that only the water falling. A physician must be consulted immediately in order to take appropriate steps to stop the infection. Chronic wounds associated with link, leaking of lymph fluid should be treated by a healthcare professional. So again, don't forget, it's not something to be treated at home. And always, prevention is the skin. You can use, uh, is the key, sorry. You can use compression devices to make the lymphedema better. Uh, the, the skin must be regularly inspected for any cracks or signs of infections. And even if you have bats at home, be careful with them. We all love bats, but they can scratch our skin. So any, don't forget to use moisturizers and any damage to your skin, insect bites, scratch, cuts, etc., in the area of a lymphedema must be avoided. Okay, now something really scary if you have infection. So this is the person that I was talking to you about that was using towels on the floor because the lymphedema was so big. She had FOP and she had a very bad infection. Skin infections can uh, lead to sepsis. So the infection can go to your bloody, to your blood and you may die. So don't let this happen. Don't be afraid to clean with soap and water, any kind of soap if you have, but you can also use Soapex as we are giving it and as, as an example. Go to a vascular specialist and a dermatologist. You will need oral treatments or some other procedures. Don't be afraid of doctors and don't wait too long when you see this kind of thing. There are skin problems possibly related to the use of drugs, much more than you all think that exist. So uh, we are not talking only about polyvertine that we all know that have skin side effects, but there are many drugs that can create uh, problems to your, sleep, to, your, to your skin. So for dry lips, never forget that you have chapstick in the United States, also with flavor, they are great. And if you are in Brazil, you can use, uh, there are a lot over the counter. There is uh, the manteiga de cacau for those that may be hearing, that is um, um, something that helps a lot and is natural. And uh, many, many things that can help. And avoid licking your lips because the more you lick, the more you create this dryness. Also, the dry skin and eczema that we have with, uh, with retinoids, not only with alvertine, but also with Accutane. So if you're taking any drug that can lead to a dry skin, be proactive. Don't wait the skin to become dry. Use the moisturizer before it helps. So if you know that you are going to have something that is going to make your skin dry, take the measures before it happens. Not only, it's not only drug related, but also FOP related because of the poor circulation in some areas. And always the showers must be very quick, not hot and not too much soap and only one per day. You can use uh, eczema lotions eczema lotions. So um, I love a lot physiogel uh, calming relief because um, you can use it daily because it, it relieves any, any itching that you may have. And in the situation of a dry skin, dry skin itches. So you can use these lotions that uh, can give you some relief. Yes, Karen? Um, we had a question earlier. Is there any, um, Steve was wondering, is there any ingredient in moisturizers that should be avoided? Not that I know. Just try not to use anything with perfume because it, it can, uh, perfume or color or something like this because it can give you, bring you allergy. The point is that some people are very allergic and they 
may have a, an allergy even from this this uh, this product. So there's nothing you have to avoid. If it's a dermatology product, it won't have any smell and it won't have any color in it. And again, you can always use just Vaseline. Uh, here you also have eczema soaps. I, did, I don't like to talk too much about soaps for dry skin because uh, people tend to think that, oh, so I can use this one very happily. I can use a lot of the soap because it's not going to damage my skin. And this is a lie. Any soap, if it's too much, may damage your skin. So you have a lot of moisturizers over the counter. Uh, these are brands that you find also in Brazil and uh, any and if you have the word intense or balm are also very, very uh, strong moisturizers. But we can talk uh, individually to all of you if you need to if you need any help with the moisturizer. Again, be careful with your baths, don't forget, it must be fast, not too much soap, warm to cold water, only one per day, and never abuse of uh, abrasive bath sponges. Don't, it's, this is something important because sometimes people buy fancy moisturizers but forget about the showers. And it's like, you know, you call people to end the fire in your house, but you're also putting fire. It, it is a nonsense. So don't forget and always drink a lot of water. Uh, there are a lot of other things that we are investigation, in, investigating, like monomorphic area, acne eruption, loss of eyebrows, as you see here, that are that may be related to some drugs, uh, especially the ones used for FOP. But we also don't know if these are uh, part of FOP itself. Um, sometimes you see cutaneous rash as a word that is like, oh, do you have any allergy? Yes, I have a cutaneous rash. There are many different ones that usually are related to anti-inflammation anti drugs or painkillers. So be very careful with these drugs. Um, then again, you're going to ask me, what can cause skin reactions? any drug, but pay double attention to painkillers, anti-inflammatory uh, steroids, olivartin and other retinoids, as you already know. And finally, the individual skin problems that may have nothing to do with FOP. So far, we don't, we don't see any link like vitiligo, occupational allergy, skin damage because of sun exposure, psoriasis, and others. So that's why, and it's important to say that when we do a kind of a questionnaire to know about dermatology and um, FOP, we are going to ask what you do on your on your day, what's your um, what are your hobbies, because we want to know what you're touching, what you do with your skin during your day. So because it may be something individual. So. We talked about a lot of things, drink a lot of waters, good diet, no sun, lots of cushions, wash your hands, be careful with infection, all very good advice, but always consult your dermatologist. And it, none of the things that we said here are, um, we are not telling you not to see a doctor, we are telling you what you can do while you are planning to go to your dermatologist. And thank you, obrigada. I'm so sorry if this was very uh, big, a very long presentation, but we feel that we have a lot of things to tell you. And I am sorry about the funny pads, but I think it's a way of breaking the eyes of so many scary pictures. Thank you. And we, we did have two questions that came in, Patricia, that I wanted to just make sure we addressed. I think some of the write-in questions that we had, a lot of them we addressed in here. Um, we did have another question about the moisturizers. We talked a lot about um, not overusing creams, and that's just any cream, correct? I mean, any overuse of anything can cause problems, not a particular cream with a certain ingredient. 
Yes, and especially on the face. When I talked about overusing moisturizers, is because on my uh, office I always see people with problems because they are using a lot of moisturizer on the face, like if like if it's never enough. So calm down. Let's see what you really need. Uh, you know, and and on the on the other hand, the person may be allergic, so you create a big big problem over a problem and. It never ends. So yes, any cream, even if it's a drug, something that may help you with your skin, can damage your skin. Thank if you. you. And steroids then... for a long time, you may have atrophy of the skin, lose the hair, the, the skin may become white. So be careful. Yeah, steroids long term can affect all sorts of things, not just the skin. Um, we did have another question from um, a young woman with FOP that she said she did go to a dermatologist and they recommended washing her hair every day to help a rash that she had on her back, but she had always heard that it was um, bad for your hair to wash it every day. So what would be kind of your recommendations or thoughts on this? Well, it depends on what was the reason why uh, the dermatologist said that. We don't know if this kind of rush was something that had a fungus involved or if it was, we don't know what it was or, and what kind of soap or shampoo she, she suggested. But if you just, if on, on a daily basis, I think if you wash your head one day yes and the other day no, it's more than enough. But this may have been a special situation. Okay, thank you. Um, and then lastly, again, there was a, a question um, in the chat about the creams again. Um, we did mention a few nighttime creams or we showed some pictures of a few nighttime creams. And, and is it okay to use the nighttime cream? Should you only use it during the day? Should you only use it at night? Is there any restrictions on that? No, we, uh, there's, there are no restrictions. I think your skin must be evaluated if it's too greasy or dry and find the right uh, creams to use. So what I usually recommend to the patients, you may have vitamin C during the day and if you have a greasy skin, you have a serum one, not a cream that is heavy. If you're older, you can use a cream and during the night you can go to uh, hyaluronic acid or some kind of moisturizer, but never, never too heavy, never. But and I know again, that individual. Yeah, very individual, that's true. And I know that um, Sharon Cantani had shared one of the serums that she uses with me. And again, I will make sure to get all of these products and recommendations entered into the online guidebook so that you have somewhere where you can go and actually see um, some of the brands that we posted today, again, we don't recommend these brands um, or one over the other. These are just examples of what we've been able to find in each of our different countries. Um, so definitely, like um, Dr. Delay said, please still consult with your doctor or with a dermatologist before overusing um, any of these products. And call me if you need. Right. I, I'm always a big. So thank you everyone so much for joining. I'm sorry we did run over, but I knew there was so much wonderful information in this webinar that I didn't want it to end until we had answered everyone's questions and shared everything. So um, Dr. Lai, thank you so much for joining me today and, and collaborating with me on presenting here. And um, we will get this uploaded to YouTube so that if you missed any of it or wanna go back and review any of it, it'll be accessible to you. So thank you everyone for joining and we hope to see you back here again sometime soon. Bye, Bye. everyone.